In the depths of the Atlantic Ocean, a mystery lies waiting to be uncovered. It is the story of the largest submarine in the world, the French World War II vessel called the Surcouf. This submarine disappeared on February 18, 1942, without a trace, and its fate remains a mystery to this day. Despite numerous efforts to uncover the truth, the disappearance of the Surcouf remains one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of the seas. The Surcouf was a unique submarine, setting itself apart from others of its era with its built-in seaplane and powerful gun turrets. It was a symbol of innovation and bravery in naval history, but its legacy is forever shrouded in the mystery of its disappearance. It was a unique vessel that set itself apart from other submarines of its era. Unlike other submarines, which were primarily designed for underwater operations, the Surcouf was built with a combination of underwater and surface capabilities. This made it a truly versatile vessel that could be used for a variety of missions, from reconnaissance and surveillance to commerce raiding and amphibious operations. One of the most notable differences between the Surcouf and other submarines of its era was its size. At nearly 700 feet or 213 meters in length and displacing over 10,000 tons, the Surcouf was significantly larger than any other submarine of its time. This allowed it to carry a larger crew, more weapons, and more supplies, making it a much more self-sufficient and capable vessel than other submarines. Another major difference between the Surcouf and other submarines of its era was its technological innovations. The Surcouf was equipped with a built-in seaplane, which could be launched and recovered while the submarine was surfaced. This seaplane could be used for a variety of missions, including reconnaissance and bombing runs, and allowed the Surcouf to operate more effectively in areas where visibility was limited. Additionally, the Surcouf was armed with two powerful gun turrets, which gave it a significant advantage in surface combat. Despite its unique capabilities, the Surcouf was not without its drawbacks. Its large size made it slower and less maneuverable than other submarines of its era, which could be a disadvantage in certain situations. Additionally, the Surcouf's sophisticated technology made it more complex and expensive to build and maintain than other submarines of its era. Despite these limitations, the French government saw the Surcouf as a crucial component of their naval strategy and a symbol of their technological and military prowess. The Surcouf was built during a time when the international community was working to regulate the size and capabilities of submarines through a series of arms control treaties. One of the most important of these treaties was the Washington Naval Treaty of 1922, which placed limits on the size and tonnage of naval vessels, including submarines. Despite these restrictions, the French government pressed ahead with the construction of the Surcouf. The French believed that the Surcouf would play a crucial role in the country's naval strategy and that its technological innovations would give France a competitive advantage in naval warfare. However, the construction of the Surcouf was not without controversy. Some criticized the French government for investing in such a large and powerful submarine when the international community was working to reduce the size of naval vessels. Others raised concerns about the economic impact of building such a large submarine, arguing that the resources used to build the Surcouf could have been better spent elsewhere. Despite these concerns, the French government remained committed to the construction of the Surcouf and saw it as a symbol of the country's technological and military prowess. That's precisely why the question arises, how such a crucial symbol suddenly disappeared without a trace. In 1940, the ship was stationed in Cherbourg, but was being refitted in Brest, in the northwest when the Germans invaded France. During this time, tensions were high between the Allies and the French, and the Royal Navy of the United Kingdom boarded the Surcouf to ensure that it wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. This action led to a scuffle on the ship, which resulted in the tragic deaths of three British and one French sailor. Despite these tensions, the British eventually completed the refit of the Surcouf and handed it over to the Free French Navy in August 1940. After being handed over, the Surcouf traveled to Quebec City in Canada for a refit after being damaged by a German plane. In January 1942, the Free French sent the submarine to the Pacific and resupplied it to Bermuda. This sudden change of direction sparked rumors that Martinique, a French island in the Caribbean Sea, was going to be taken from the Vichy regime for Free France. However, all of a sudden, communications with the Surcouf ceased after it left on February 12, 1942 for the Panama Canal. The mysterious disappearance of the French WW2 submarine has long been the subject of intense speculation and debate. While the exact cause of its disappearance remains unknown, one theory suggests that the submarine met its end on the 18th of February, 1942, after being ridden over by the American ship Thompson Likes. This theory is based on eyewitness accounts and circumstantial evidence, 
and it has captivated military enthusiasts and historians for decades. On the fateful night of February 18, 1942, the Thompson Lykes was navigating the Atlantic Ocean when it suddenly encountered the Surcouf. According to the ship's crew, the submarine was floating on the surface of the water and appeared to be in distress. The Thompson Lykes attempted to render assistance, but before it could do so, the submarine suddenly vanished without a trace. The disappearance of the Surcouf has remained one of the greatest mysteries of the seas, and many believe that the submarine was sunk by the Thompson Lykes. Some argue that the submarine was already damaged when it encountered the American ship and that it was unable to withstand the force of the ship riding over it. Others believe that the submarine may have been sunk by the Thompson Lykes deliberately in order to prevent it from falling into enemy hands. The theory that the French submarine Surcouf was sunk by a German U-boat is one of the many explanations that have been proposed to explain the submarine's disappearance. This theory is based on the fact that, at the time of its disappearance, the Surcouf was operating in a heavily patrolled area of the Atlantic Ocean, where German U-boats were known to be operating. It is believed that one of these U-boats may have spotted the Surcouf and decided to attack it, sinking the submarine and its entire crew in the process. The theory that the Surcouf was sunk by a German U-boat is not without its problems, however. For one, there is no concrete evidence that any German U-boat was in the area at the time of the submarine's disappearance. Furthermore, even if a U-boat was present, it is unclear why it would have sunk the Surcouf, as the submarine was known to be operating on behalf of the Free French Navy, which was allied with the Allies at the time. Another theory surrounding Surcouf was that it got lost at sea due to a combination of factors such as poor weather conditions, navigation errors, mechanical failure, or a collision with another vessel. The submarine was one of the largest and most advanced submarines of its time, but it was also one of the least understood and documented. Surcouf was equipped with state-of-the-art technology and had several advanced features that made it a formidable vessel. However, these features also made the submarine more complex and difficult to operate, which could have contributed to its loss. For example, the submarine was equipped with an advanced sonar system that was capable of detecting enemy vessels, but it was also known to have had a tendency to malfunction. Another theory is that Surcouf was lost due to a collision with another vessel. At the time of its disappearance, the submarine was reportedly traveling in one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world, and it is possible that it collided with another vessel. However, no evidence of such a collision has ever been found, and the exact cause of the submarine's disappearance remains unknown. The mystery of the disappearance of Surcouf has been a topic of discussion for many years, and several steps have been taken in an attempt to solve it. The first step was to gather information about the submarine's last known movements and location. This was done through the examination of naval records, interviews with survivors, and the analysis of weather patterns and ocean currents at the time of the disappearance. Another step was the examination of possible causes of the loss, including enemy attack, technical failure, and crew error. This was done by analyzing wartime records and interviewing surviving crew members, as well as consulting with experts in naval architecture and submarine operations. Another important step was the use of advanced technology to search for the wreckage of the submarine, including sonar and underwater remote sensing equipment. The search efforts have been ongoing for many years and have involved multiple organizations and individuals, including private groups, military organizations, and governments. Despite these efforts, the exact cause of the loss of Surcouf remains a mystery to this day. After all, there are many theories regarding the disappearance of the Surcouf. Until today, nobody has found the wreck of the submarine, and so the course of events leading to this tragedy will likely remain unresolved forever.